Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So I've come up with a way of making my own personalized adhesive notes. So if you wanna see how I do it, then just keep watching. Okay, so to start off with, we're gonna need a bunch of stuff. You don't necessarily need a die cutting machine. You can do this with scissors if you're really at the bottom end of the having tools to do this with. If you have a die cutting machine like this one, this is obviously gonna be a bit easier but you can also use a Cricut or a Silhouette or something like that. And that's how I've made these little ones, which I'm using in my um, social media planner at the moment. These ones are just stamped with the Wild and Free uh, Bear Paw Print. So from the Planners Anonymous kit. Uh, that one is a little bit more complicated, obviously. The ones that I'm gonna make now are a bit easier because they're just a square. So you can just do this with any kind of stamp that you have. I'm just gonna use it with a die and stamp set because I've got one and then use the die cutting machine, obviously. So then the die and stamp I'm gonna use is something I showed you in my Phaser Craft haul video the other week. So I'm gonna use this one here with the border. I think it'd make a really nice to-do note or something like a, a sticky note that you can just stick in your planner. Uh, and then obviously I'm gonna use the matching die. So I'm gonna start off with just cutting out the dies. I have already done a big pile of them just to save me the hassle. Some people like to stamp and then cut. I'm one of the people that likes to cut and then stamp just personal preference and it's just whatever you're happy to do. I just find when I'm die cutting, I tend to, you know, break or cut over where I've already stamped. So I'm just grabbing a piece of paper. This is Canson drawing paper. This is my favorite kind of paper to craft with, play with, stamp on, just in general, it's my favorite, I love it. I'm just gonna fold this into thirds and it's just so I can tear it, basically. Can cut it with the trimmer, just don't want to. Just easy to do it this way. And the only reason I'm doing this is so it goes through my paper cuts or DIY cuts a little bit easier. There you go. So you've got three pieces. So we're gonna get obviously a, a big pile of these out of here. So I'm gonna send this down. You'll get three. You could get four if you really tightened it up, but I'm, I'm quite happy with three to be fair. Uh, but as I always do when I am die cutting, I am going to uh, stick this down just with a little bit of washi just to stop it sort of rolling around in there. It does happen sometimes and it kind of annoys me. So I'm just getting a bit of tape and then I'm gonna unstick it a little bit. I got a lot more there than I need. This will probably be enough for the whole project. It just saves me doing it later. So you just sort of stick that down. You make sure that all three of your bits are together. And then we're going to run this through the die cutting machine three times. I'm just going to move um, move the die each time. I have had people tell me my sandwich is wrong. I think as long as it cuts, it doesn't really matter which way your sandwich goes. Um, and I'm not sure if that's thick enough. I might need to put an extra bit of plastic. Yeah, I do. There we go. So I'm just going to run these through and I'll be right back. Okay, so all sent through, all cut, no issue at all. Just a little bit of washi that doesn't want to come off. Now we did kind of um, de-stick that washi a little bit, but just still be careful when you're taking it off, just so you don't tear the paper. Obviously we've got plenty of pieces, so it's not a bad thing, it's just obviously gonna be a couple less. So you just need to take all the washi that is left over off your paper. And there you have the beginnings of our little notepad. Like I said, you can do this with any shape you like. You can cut it on your Cricut, you can cut it with your die cutting, you can cut it by hand. There was one I did the other week uh, when I was using the Hello Universe kit. I kind of used, if you remember back to that one, it had like a swipey thing of ink. I used that to make my post-its and they were just little kind of ones like that. Um, I don't think I have any left, I think I used them all. Uh, 
but it's, it's whatever and I just cut them all out by hand or with my paper trimmer anyway so you can take it as far as you want and make them as complicated as you like so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp onto these so like I said we're gonna grab this pretty one here with the border you could do this with just black if you wanted to it doesn't really matter I'm gonna do mine in color because I can so I have a bunch of my inks here one two three four five six seven eight I've got eight so I'm just gonna make eight little piles and just stamp them you know one by one so I don't have to keep changing my colors so I'm just doing that by just cutting these in half a lot and I'm not really all that worried if they're even or not it, it doesn't actually bother me so I'm just gonna stamp each of these one by one and this is where having a clear block comes in really handy because you can actually see where you're stamping if you want to grab a piece of scrap paper for this part it's probably not the worst idea especially if you've got a nice table that you don't want to get dirty and some of these haven't cut brilliantly but I kind of like the the differences I guess in each of the different bits of paper it kind of adds a bit to these and it really does sort of show off that they're homemade I guess a little bit like handmade cards so I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all of these and I'll be back. Okay, so that actually worked out really nicely and I have just, I think I have three or four of all of them. So that actually worked. They actually look really cool. I like the way they've come out. And I think the fun thing, and it's a little bit like the cutting, I like the fact that these are all a little bit different. Not two of them are the same, and that's a good thing. So I'm gonna mix these up a little bit so that I kind of get the colors in a random kind of order. There's our little notepad which you can see is all different colors actually looks really cool when you do that and then this is the star of the show this is the thing that's going to make this really like make them sticky notes this is repositionable glue stick it's Elmer's you don't have to use a glue stick if you don't want to there is another option which is this one it's the Renoir um, uh, temporary adhesive both of these are going to give you very similar results I find this one sticks a little bit longer but has a habit of leaving a bit more tack behind. This one, they don't stay as positionable, like these are all stuck together now and I can probably put that down once, maybe twice, three, four, oh no, that's not too bad but they sort of, you've only sort of got maybe, maybe sort of 10 sticks with these ones, you've probably got 20 sticks with this one but it does leave a little bit of tack behind so for that reason I prefer the glue stick. So what we're going to do, and this is what's clever about this, if you glue this straight and then stick things together straight away, it's going to be a permanent adhesion and it's just a normal glue stick. However, if you leave this for about 60 seconds, it's going to then, that's going to leave the, the tacky bit for you. So you want to keep in mind that you want to leave one of these as not sticky because that's the bottom one. So that one stays there. And then what we're going to do is lay these, not out, 
but just sort of put them down so you can run glue all along them. And how much glue you put on there really depends on you and your sort of the way you like to use post-it notes. If you want the whole thing to be sticky, go ahead. It's not going to make any difference. I just like the top to be sticky. So I just sort of glue the top bit. And then while that bit's sticking, I'll do the next line. So I'm just keeping in mind roughly how long they've been sitting there. You don't need to give them exactly a minute. It doesn't have to be a minute to the second. But if you can give it, whoops, missed a bit. Um, if you give it too much longer than a minute, it tends to lose all the tackiness completely. So you kind of have to do it somewhere between the 30 seconds and a minute bit. Whoops, not doing a good job with this glue. And I'm really showing now why I don't like using glue sticks. So then all you need to do is just sort of join these all together again. If you want to stop your hands from getting sticky, sorry, I sneezed before, which is now why I sound like I have a stuffy nose. Um, if you do want to stop your fingers from getting sticky through this process, you can use tweezers to sort of hold these together. But just as you're sticking them down, just give it a little bit of pressure. I don't really mind if my fingers get sticky, it doesn't bother me. And then you just repeat the process and you're just sticking them on the top. Keep the, the little pile as close together as you can so that way it sort of stays as a nice little sticky note pack. And because they still have a little bit of give to them even after they've been stuck together, you can sort of move them around a little if you want to keep that really nice block. And you would have seen along the way there, I got some glue on the, like on the front side of this. That's not a problem because you're going to stick something down to it anyway. I haven't had yet any problem with the ink coming off, but this is the first time I've used the Kazercraft ink as opposed to my normal, um, Oh, actually that's not true. I, oh no, that was the, I was going to say that's not true. I used it for the paw pads, but that's not true. I used the, um, the ink that came with that kit, which was that beautiful grey. Do you remember back to when we got ink with the Planners Anonymous kits? I do miss the ink. I love what we got instead. Like I much prefer the vellum and the acetate, but I do miss the inks. So I've done the first lot. There is a little bit of transfer with the glue. That doesn't bother me. Again, we want the handmade. If we wanted these to be ones from the shops, we'd just buy them from the shops. Now I got this glue from Craft Online. It was rather hard to find. I did do a lot of Google searching on where to buy glue, where to buy repositionable glue from. The Renoir is from Spotlight, really easy to find. And like I said, it does work really well if you don't want to have to wait to get this. I bought this from Craft Online. It was $5.49 or six bucks uh, but you do then have to pay a bit of postage so it depends on if you want to wait if you want to pay the postage etc etc it is going to I would say it's gonna be worth your while if you're gonna be doing this on a regular basis like if you want to keep making yourself little piles of post-it notes um, obviously the, the glue is probably gonna serve you well in the end but it just yeah comes down to what you can do and what you want to do Okay, so we've got our little book, I call it a book, it's not a book, it's a pad, all stuck together. Now this next part is completely optional, you don't have to do it. What I like to do with my little notepads is I put the little, put a little clip on it, leave it for probably, I don't know, half an hour, and that's generally enough. You don't want this to be a permanent adhesion, so you don't want it to be super stuck. But at the same time, it just does give you a little bit of extra sort of adhesion to it. You can also then mount this on a nice sort of block if you want to or find a way to put it in your planner like that. I mean, it is pretty easy to kind of kind of sit this just in the little pocket at the front. You can make it a little bit thinner if you want so it sat in there a little bit nicer. But there's a really simple way to make yourself some customised post-it notes that don't cost all that much. Really, it's only cost you $7 for this and it'll last you forever. Everything else, that can be done with scrap paper. You don't even have to do it with nice paper. You can use any kind of paper you like. You can use decorative paper. You can just do, could, seriously, just cut up scrap pieces of paper and stick them all together and use them as post-it notes. They stick fine. Like I said, depends on how long you want to keep them for. 
But if they're just something like mine that I go through like there's no tomorrow because I just stick them in and then unstick them and throw them away, these are going to be brilliant. And I actually really like the size of these ones. I think they've turned out really, really well. So that is it for this little how-to make your own post-it notes video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. You do need a couple of sort of specialized tools along the way, mainly the glue. Uh, but everything else you should have hanging around for you. You can cut them out with scissors if you want. Completely up to you. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and if it was helpful. Don't forget to be following me on all of my social medias and to be subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any future DIYs. If there is anything you'd like to see me try and make, if there's something you've always wanted to try and you sort of don't know how and you want to give me something to try, let me know. Love, love, love getting things to do from you guys. It makes life a lot easier for me. Other than that, guys, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and I will see you on Friday. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.